Hey you guys, it's Carolyn from Homesteading Family and I wanted to give you a tour today of what the garden, the cottage garden, is looking like right now at the end of May. It's still not completely grown in like it's gonna get, but a lot has started to grow and there's a lot of exciting things happening in here, so I wanted to show it to you. Okay, so right over here, we have an area that's still pretty bare. And this is an area that is filled with flowers or is going to be filled with flowers for cutting. This is my cutting garden area. You know, I have a hard time just cutting flowers that are supposed to be decorating the garden now out and taking them inside. But I find that if I have an area of flowers that are just meant for bringing inside as bouquets, then I actually bring them in and I love having them inside. Okay, so over here we have some lupin, some ladies mantle, and some yarrow. And um, they are just starting to really go to town. But up here, we have some perennial vegetables, and I love these things. This is a Good King Henry right here. It is a perennial spinach type plant. This used to be incredible, incredibly popular in old cottage gardens as a vegetable. Um, and somehow it's just kind of fallen out of favor. So I'm really enjoying this. It's a perennial, so it comes up first thing in the spring. Before I can ever get any seeds in, this stuff is ready to harvest and start eating. So I really like that. These taller plants right back here are lovage. And you can eat those, they taste a lot like a celery. Um, you can eat those as they are, but a lot of times they're used as a seasoning, especially as they get older, their flavor gets a little stronger. Of course, we've got some parsley, and then we've got my French sorrel. Now there's not a lot of it. A gopher got in here last fall and took out a large amount of our French sorrel. So there's some baby French sorrel that started from seed coming up in the rest of the patch. I've got broccolis planted all the way through here and there are gonna be a lot of flowers that are gonna keep popping up throughout the season. Now over here, I start to have some more of my, um, my herbs that I use for culinary seasonings. So the chervil is down there. We've got some onions. We have a lot of chives, some dill. This is a mullein plant that was a volunteer and I went ahead and left it there because I use a lot of that for medicine. So this is a great plant to have in the garden. And then I've got some Napa cabbage tucked in here. And this is gonna become a great kimchi or maybe even a sauerkraut, but probably more of a kimchi. And you know, these, um, these the, the fermented vegetables like that kimchi is just one of the best things that you can do for your immune system. So this is actually a really important part of the medicinal part of this garden is to make sure we're getting those good fermented vegetables in. Of course, I've got my apothecary damask roses and those are just about to start setting little blooms. Little buds are just starting to form, but it is really happy this year. And I've got multiplier onions tucked in here. Now, I don't tend to use multiplier onions a lot because they're so small. But when I find that I really, really like having them is when I run out of other onions. They are just always here. They're always ready for me to grab them, whether I'm paying attention to them or not, they're there. So I really like that. Now I like having some of my salad vegetables real close at hand to the kitchen, like that cherry tomato. So I have a couple of those tucked in, along with a whole bunch of radishes that obviously need to be thinned. But the kids love having these real close at hand. I tuck in the nasturtiums too for, um, well, I just like the nasturtiums for one, but they're really edible and we love putting them in salads for their spiciness. But I also like the pickled nasturtiums because they love capers and they make a really good mock caper. Okay, lots more chives and some more cabbages, but now we're getting into the culinary herb section of this garden. So I've got my sage in here. I've got my spot where my sweet basil is going to go in the next few days. It's just finally getting warm enough that we can get those in. Now you'll see little plants all over kind of that, that aren't falling into grouping. And a lot of those are flowers. There's a lot of poppies in here. There's a lot of sunflowers in here, forage plants, 
all sorts of things and I kind of let those just go wild where they want to go. I just weed them out if there gets to be too many of them, but it just really adds to that nice cottage garden feel and I love having the flowers mixed in and it really brings the pollinators in. Now I've got my French tarragon and you guys can see we have a lot of mushrooms growing in this soil. If you remember last year, this time last year, this was still all in sod. That's all this was. This was a lawn, this whole area. And we brought in a lot of mulch, a lot of compost, and really turned this in kind of that instant lasagna garden style into this space. And that these mushrooms are just a sign that this soil is alive and it's healthy and it's repairing and it's getting balanced. So it's a great sign to see these mushrooms in the garden. But these little brown mushrooms are things we don't ever pick when we don't know what they are in the wild. So they are not edible mushrooms. We've got the winter savory, which I love because it's a perennial. And the more things that I can have in here as a perennial, the more things I know are gonna be there even in a hard year when I can't start plants inside. So I always grow the winter savory, which is the perennial, instead of the summer savory, which is an annual. Now, let's see, we have a few open spaces here where a lot of things are gonna go in. This is my space that I like to have a big teepee of runner beans. It's probably gonna go in this weekend. Okay, now we're moving down into the much more medicinal section of this garden. We've come away from the entrance to the kitchen, so it transitions away from the culinary type items and into medicinals. So down in this section, you're gonna start seeing a lot more things like the bee balm or the monarda, the calendula. We've got a lot of ignatia popping up all over the place, valerian. Here's a little wood betony. And this is a really good example of what happens in a cottage garden that's perennial. Now, back when I planted these, I planted the wood betony and this valerian plant last year they looked like their spacing was just fine. Now I can see that this valerian's really taking over the space of the wood bet betony. I've got a lot of valerian in this garden, so I don't actually need this one. So I'm gonna have to remove this one to make sure this wood betony has room to keep growing. This really is what happens a lot when you're dealing with a perennial garden because um, you end up as things develop having to protect things from each other. I like to call it playing kindergarten cop. You need to come in and make sure everything's playing fair with each other and not encroaching on each other's space. And that means sometimes you need to take out a plant that is encroaching. <laughs> so this valerian's gonna go to make a room for this wood betony. Okay, now we've got a couple of different mints in here. So we've got a peppermint here and we've got the hops are all growing up in the background. Now, if you guys remember the early pictures of this garden last year, these things were all tiny. I started all of these things from seed last year. So this is just a huge jump forward and it's really exciting to see. But we've got a lot of valerians growing in here. This is a very, very happy catnip. Um, the cats do like it. They come in here and they take a nap, but this is so good for settling nerves and for tummies, like babies' tummies especially, it just really helps to soothe that kind of gassy, colicky in a baby. Now I've got a few new plants tucked in here that are real little. I have a rock rose, a lady's mantle. I've got a few others kind of tucked in here, a blue vervain and some immortelle. And those are just gonna grow up to add to the medicinal features in this garden. Over here, the elecampane is doing really well. This is a very, very good herb for respiratory problems and for building respiratory strength. So um, this is a really good herb right now with uh, the pandemic that we're facing. I'm really thankful that I have developed these here in the garden ready for use. And we've got the lavender starting to come back up. Of course, we've got some hyssop. Back tucked in the back, I have a few fava, fava beans just for some early picking back in the shady areas. And of course, the hollyhocks are gonna grow up big and tall here. Now, 
Josh promised me for my birthday that he's going to build me my archway entry. <laughs> so I'm telling you, so you can hold him to it. But um, so I have arbor roses coming and I'm really excited about my arbor roses that are going to climb up and climb over the arch entryway um, so we can get a gate so we have a little easier access from the outside. Guys, thanks for joining me in the garden. I'm going to do another tour in probably another month or two, and you're going to see how much this changes drastically over the months. It's just going to really be a jungle. It's going to be great. See you soon. Goodbye.